can you really shoot a bow faster and more accurate when using a thumb ring? Welcome back. We continue to rate AOE2 technologies by the historical and logical accuracy, but in this format we're going to look at the general tech tree, look at all the non-unique technologies and I'm telling you how much sense I think each of them makes. Yeah? So does it fit in a general timeline? Is it historically somehow accurate and does it have the effect in the game that it also has in reality? We are going to cover archer range, barracks and stable in the first video. I've chosen Saracens because they have more technologies in these three buildings. The first one is the range, however we keep this for the end because I have something special planned with it and start with the barracks. Starting with supplies. Militia line costs minus 15 food. Okay, so how does supply in medieval army work? You cannot generalize it, but more often than not, people were fighting for a specific person, not for a nation. So there was a there was some bloke, I don't know, a duke, a king or so, and he was raising an army to do some naughty stuff, and he needed to pay those people, and those people often were supplying themselves. They were bringing stuff from home on a cart. They were foraging. They were purchasing stuff from the local population. In rare cases, they were plundering. There are exceptions. Yeah? Sometimes the supply was organized centrally by the general. Paperwork of such logistic has survived, but often people were supplying themselves. And yeah, so it's good that su attack called supplies is in the game. Supplies is an important part of, of warfare, but I have some problems with its effect. So first of all, why does it affect only infantry? Shouldn't it also affect cavalry? I mean, a guy on a horse also needs to eat. And more importantly, his horse also needs to eat and it eats a lot. One of the reasons why it's expensive to have a lot of cavalry in your army is because you need to feed all the horses. That's one problem. The other problem is the effect itself. So if you think about it, from the perspective of the player, or from the perspective of the, the general, shouldn't it increase cost of food? If you supply your army, you decide, okay, I'm not paying my army only, I also supply them, doesn't it mean you have to provide more food so the food cost is higher? But on the other hand, you can save some gold because the people in your army would probably accept to offer the services at a lower pay if they know lunch is free. So these two problems are the reason why I give it only two out of five stars. There's something good about this tech, yeah. Um, it has, I mean supplies has to do something with food, but there are some problems with it. A better name would be anything that has to do with food preservation, like um, salting, pickling or so. Yeah? That could be a good name for a technology that makes your infantry cost less food. Next one is squares. Infantry moves 10% faster. A squire is someone who is serving a knight, doing everything that needs to be done, taking care of the horses, taking care of the armor, carrying his staff, protecting, protecting him in battle, um, cooking his dishes, walking his dogs, sniffing his socks, all that stuff. So it's someone serving a knight and thus this tech should affect the knight line and not infantry. A squire is just there to help the knights, not the infantry. And um, yeah, I mean 10% movement fee speed, is that's nice, makes sense for the knight line, not for infantry. So because of that it's yeah, it's really affecting the wrong unit in a very clear way, so just one out of five stars. But what would be a better name for this technology? What about supplies? Yeah, because if you supply your army, they have to spend less time foraging and looking for food can, and can actually advance faster. That would be a better name for this technology, I think. Arson. Infantry do more damage versus buildings. Okay, arson is the act of setting something on fire intentionally and burning does damage a building. So the effect makes absolute sense. And I give it 
four to five stars, not five, because is it a technology? Is arson really something you can develop it? How can you invent arson or much better, how can you not invent it? How can a civilization not have the ability to set things on fire? That's why one star gets seducted because that doesn't make so much sense. We move on with the stable and start with bloodlines. Bloodlines refers to breeding animals to achieve some desirable traits. In that kind, in that case, breeding a warhorse. And it cannot be overemphasized how crucial it is to breed your horse. You cannot just domesticate it and then ride onto it into battle, let alone convince it to charge into those people. You really need to breed it into a direction that it has the, the size, the muscularity, but also the behavior to do that. Yeah? Um, so the effect, by the way, I forgot to show that, is 20 HP for mounted units. It, it makes sense to some extent, yeah, to some extent, because a size and therefore HP is an important part of of a warhouse. Um, not the only one, yeah. We, we talked about behavior shortly, but size size matters. Um, yeah. So there were different breeds. There was there were palfreys and couriers, and there was the destrier. These are different names for horse breeds. And destrier, that is the warhouse. That's that's what you use in battle. Um, and I want to give this technology five out of five stars because the effect, although it's not perfect, makes sense. But the reason I give it 5 out of 5 is because it really is emphasizing an aspect that is yeah, maybe underrated, how important it is when it comes to uh, being a civilization that can use horses in battle. Husbandry makes your horses run 10% faster. Um, husbandry is the act of keeping animals for specific use. You know? So having a pet parrot is nice, but it's not husbandry unless you keep 25 parrots to eat parrot eggs. Anyways, back to horses. Uh, and by the way, bloodlines is also an aspect of husbandry. Yeah? Husbandry is very generalistic, just describing you keep animals, in that case, in that case horses. And it makes sense that a civilization which is advanced in keeping horses will have faster horses because they are well fed, well trained. But I give this tech just three out of five stars because it's just too generalistic. Uh, it's husbandry is an umbrella term. It could have any effect which has to do with animals. So yeah, too generalistic for more than three stars. Thumpering. Archers fire faster and with 100% accuracy. Before we can judge this, we first have to go outside and learn some archery fundamentals. To understand what the thumpering is used for, we first need to establish that there are different ways to draw a bow. If you give a child a bow, they will instinctively use a pinch draw. So they pinch the string between thumb and index finger and Pull it back but this will not work with a heavy poundage raw bow because you just cannot generate enough strength between two fingers to to pull the string a better way is the mediterranean way the mediterranean draw which is used uh, nowadays in olympic archery for example because it's it's very precise uh, thereby you put the arrow on the opposite side of the drawing hand so my drawing hand is on the right but the arrow is on the left side of the bow. This is because when you draw the bow with your fingers holding the string from the right side, you automatically twist the string to the right. In other words, you rotate the string clockwise. With that, the arrow turns towards the right as well and is pushed against the bow and held stable. If the arrow was on the same side as the drawing hand, it would constantly wear away from the bow, making the whole process very awkward. And then two fingers go underneath the string and one, uh, the arrow, and one goes on top. And from here you draw and lose. 
third way is the Mongolian draw and that's where a thumb ring can be used. I'll explain later how. With the Mongolian draw you put the wrong way. You put the arrow on the same side as the drawing horn. So both is on the right now. And then you wrap the thumb around the string, grab it with two fingers and from there you draw. All right, so from this field trip, we learned first of all different techniques of drawing a bow, and second of all, that the thumb ring can only be used with the Mongolian draw. Other techniques don't even use a thumb. Now, what does a thumb ring do? I didn't use one because I don't have one, but it's, it's, it's simple to explain. If you use the Mongolian draw, you might wear out your thumb from drawing the string again and again. So, the thumb ring is there to protect your thumb. You can hook the string onto the thumb ring, thus not pulling it with your actual thumb and protecting it. Yeah, uh, the Mongolian draw was used as the name suggests, predominantly in Asia. It was kind of widely spread, often used by horse archers. And yeah, let's judge this technology we're gonna treat it as if the name was a uh, Mongolian draw with thumbpring because thumbpring itself gives us very little to work with. So, can an archer shoot faster when using Mongolian draw with thumbpring? Yes, absolutely. That's one of the advantages. You have the arrow on the same side of the bow as the drawing hand, thus you can reload faster. More accurate? No, um, for me it was harder to hit the target with the Mongolian draw than with the Mediterranean. If you don't trust me, trust Olympic archers, they use the Mediterranean draw only. So the effect is a half hit. Mm, what else? Well, the technology affects some units which could never use a thumbprint, for example Ballista Elephant. Sorry, no matter how hard you try, you cannot use a thumbprint, dear elephant. Um, the picture, the in-game picture is mysterious because okay you have something like a ring on the thumb all right but something is sticking out to the outside whereas if you want to have something sticking out it should be to the inside because you hook the string on the inside of your thumb uh, so the picture is a bit questionable yeah overall i give this uh, a score of two out of five because the effect is uh -huh -huh, it affects some unit which should not be affected Two to five. All right, Parthian tactics. Cavalry archers have plus one, plus two armor and do more damage versus pikemen. That name comes from the Parthians, which was a tribe in what is nowadays Iran, Iraq. And their horse archers had the ability that when being chased, they could turn around, as shown on the picture, and shoot while moving at full speed at enemies behind them. You don't need me to tell you that this takes a lot of skill. So, Parthian Tactics is what we refer to as hit and run. The tech affects the right unit, obviously, and I can also understand where the name is coming from. If you have the ability to shoot while moving, that, um, yeah, of course increases your survivability in battle, so I can understand where the armor is coming from. I cannot understand why it does more damage, particularly against pikemen, but still, overall, I give this a 4 out of 5. However, I still have to nitpick a little bit, because if you look closely at the picture, you will see that this guy is moving the Metronine draw instead of the Mongolian draw, which he should be using. These were just the first three buildings. Let me know what you rather want to see next. Proceed with this format, go back and cover the rest of the unique tags, or tackle unique units. Roll the credits.